So energy, like matter, there's a law of energy and that's not working, hold on. So the law of energy is, is similar to the law of matter, but it's also very different. Number one, it has two parts, and you have to know the first, you have to distinguish the first law from the second law. And within the second law, there's three parts, and you have to know all three parts. Okay, so who knows what the, and by the way, the law of energy is called the law of thermodynamics, so it's the same thing. When you see that, you have to remember it's talking about energy and not matter. Like matter, energy cannot be what? Created or destroyed, only what? Transformed. Now, unlike matter, when energy gets transformed, it does not recycle. So if you want to write that down right now, matter cycles, energy flows. It's different. Because when matter is going through a system, it gets placed back into the system at some point. When energy goes through its system, it comes out differently. So, and matter changes state, but energy loses its ability to do work, which is the definition of energy. So that makes it completely different. It flows and doesn't cycle. So the second law says, every time energy transfers, three things happen. Who knows what they are? And if you look at the pictures, it can kind of guide you. Every time energy transfers, so energy can't be created or destroyed, only transferred. Every time it transfers, what happens? It loses some. It loses some. Energy is going to get lost, and it's going to get lost in the form of heat energy. I just took off the first block. Lost as heat. Energy is lost as heat. So you see this picture right here where it says energy input? I can't, I can't stress this enough. Energy input always equals energy output. The difference is the available energy to perform a task gets lost. So this energy input, I'm pointing right there, equals the heat plus the useful energy. It equals the initial system because energy can't be destroyed. It's just not going to be usable energy. Whenever heat flows, it flows from hot to cold. That's the second sentence. Heat flows from hot to to cold and as the system produces or, or I'm sorry loses as a system takes place or the flow of energy takes place that system is going to create entropy which is molecules are going to get dispersed and that's kind of explaining why it loses its high quality energy and becomes dispersed energy which is low quality energy what's another way to describe energy flowing from hot to cold what's the, the most accurate So more to less. So it's just like when you did diffusion in bio. Molecules always want to move from where they're highly concentrated to where they're less concentrated, yes? So if, it's, if we're talking about energy, they're going to go from wherever there's more heat energy to wherever there's less. That's why you see the disbursement of molecules, right? That's the entropy. All right, so now we're going to talk about the types of energy in the ecosystem, which are six forms. Okay, and the first thing I want to tell you is that energy is open. That's the first word. It's an open system. What was matter? Closed. So define that explanation for me. Why is matter closed and energy is open? So can energy, right? What made matter a closed system? It cycles on Earth. All the matter that's on Earth is going to cycle on Earth. So what is energy? It can't be created or destroyed, but how is it open? It's not closed. It flows. it flows, but that still doesn't describe its openness. Okay, it's open. yeah. So our atmosphere is part of Earth. You're, you're close, though. Like what? What's the start of energy on Earth? Sun. sun. Sun is not in our Earth, right? So the sun's rays, which is the start of all energy on Earth, come down. And then they, get, they flow through the ecosystem, through living and non-living things. And then they're lost as heat, and heat will flow and flow up, and it eventually leaves Earth. Yes. That I said. So the only this that negates the law, right? But any matter that is ever on Earth will always cycle on Earth. Or we take it out and build a space station, we took matter out, right? But energy starts outside of Earth. All right. Name me the six forms of energy. And so you know, I know you always want to say potential and kinetic. One of these forms is potential, the rest are kinetic. What's the difference? What's potential mean? Stored energy. What's kinetic? 
energy and what? Motion, okay? So all of these have motion. This is my stored energy, which can get transferred into motion energy. All right, so name any. What's the start of all energy on Earth, people? Sun, that's the start, okay? So we got solar. What's another form of energy? What do we lose it as usually? Heat, another form of energy. What else is a form of energy? What do we call food energy? Calories. Good, but they're measured as what kind of energy? Just like fossil fuels. Chemical, chemical energy. Like think of glucose, right? You think of plants making chemical energy, stored energy that then we can use. What's another, what do you think this is? This glow over here. Light. No. What glows in real life? Yes, nuclear energy. That's literally a nuclear power plant. This I never get, so I'm just going to expose it. Is mechanical energy, which is a form of kinetics. So is solar, so is heat, because uh, there's motion. And what do you think this is? Electrical. Electrical. Good job. If I say we're going to learn about energy through the ecosystem, what does that mean? If I ask you that on a test right now, how do you define that? Energy flowing through the, through the food chain, which is through living things and that's a living thing, a ecosystem. Energy flowing through living things and, non -living thing. which, explain it to me in a sentence then. I'm gonna study the way energy flows through living things through the food chain and also travels through what? What would be the ecosystem portion of energy traveling? That's a living thing. How about geosphere? hydrosphere, atmosphere, yes? Because if you're gonna define ecosystem, you have to define the living and the non-living components. And energy flows through all that. Okay, this is a slight little problem. I can't even pause the video, hold. Wow. All right, I hope this is working. Energy through the biosphere, that's where we are, right? What does it start with? You should know this answer. Sun, good job. It starts with the sun. What organisms use the sun's energy directly? Plants. What's a better name this time than plants? Because there's other, good, autotrophs. What's another word for autotrophs? Producers, those are the first two blanks. Literally says autotrophs slash producers. What do they do? They make their own food. They make their own food, good job. They use the sun's energy and convert it to chemical energy, which is food energy in the form of glucose. And then in that process, a whole bunch of energy is lost as heat into the environment, right? So there's your ecological, goes into the plant, gets lost as heat into the environment, but the plant converts it to chemical energy. When plants use the sun's energy, that process is called what? To make their own food. So it says plants through photosynthesis, right? But then there's other organisms, which are bacteria, who use light, not sun, and make food energy as well. Anybody know what that process is called? That's the backwards, right? That's plants. Look at the picture, okay? There's a, at the picture at the bottom right, what is that? Hydrothermal vents. Bacteria lives in these vents and they use the heat to create what? Food, what's that process called? Something synthesis, correct, chemosynthesis. Bacteria through chemosynthesis. Now, this reaction is different from photosynthesis but similar. You do not have to know the balanced equation, however, you have to know the equation for chemosynthesis. So the first difference is photosynthesis uses sun to drive the reaction. Chemosynthesis uses what? Light. Heat. Heat, good. So make that note in your mind because if I ask you a question, compare and contrast photosynthesis and chemosynthesis, a comparison would be what? Look at the reaction. They both make food. They both make food in the form of what compound? Glucose. glucose. I'll accept that. So they both have products which are glucose. What else is another comparison? They both, they both use carbon dioxide and they both use water. 
What's the difference? That um, chemosynthesis uses heat and the photosynthesis uses the sun. Chemosynthesis uses heat, photosynthesis uses the sun. What else? Um, photosynthesis produces oxygen. Photosynthesis produces oxygen, chemosynthesis does not. And one more thing. There's a reactant in chemosynthesis and a product in photosynthesis that's not sulfur. in the sulfur compounds. So know. you have to know that a reactant of chemosynthesis is hydrogen sulfide and a product is sulfur compounds. You don't have to know what compound it is, just sulfur compounds is enough. Any questions on that? All right, so once we have our producers, who's next? Consumers. What's another word for consumer? Heterotrophs. Heterotrophs slash consumers. What do they do? They, cons they eat the food. Good. They eat, right? They feed off other organisms. They cannot make their own food. They use the sun's energy indirectly because they obtain their energy from other organisms. When you are a primary consumer, what do you eat? Plants. What do we call plant eaters? Herbivores. So number one, primary consumers. They're called herbivores and they eat plants. Now I'm done.